Hello again, everyone, and thank you so much for joining us for another edition of Alaska Weather on this 27th day of September, 2018, Thursday. On to the uh, hazardous weather graphic. There are no watches, warnings, or advisories out anywhere in the state of Alaska, uh, with the exception of some gale warnings that are out in some of the marine areas that we'll look at later on. Next, satellite imagery showing a lot of moisture that has flowed northward here from the Pacific, taking a turn to the northeast and then east. Uh, main rain producing area has been down here from the Alaska Peninsula to Kodiak Island north into uh, southern Cook Inlet and the Kenai Peninsula area with uh, rain streaming over to Yakutat this afternoon. And then uh, real light amounts uh, making their way inland and really not much of any uh, significant rainfall in the uh, thick cirrus seal, thick cirrus shield here that's uh, coming in from the south to the north and across the upper Tanana Valley or into the uh, Fairbanks area and the 40 mile country, mostly clear skies up to the north there, and then some clouds for the north slope in the Brooks Range. And you can see that the uh, moisture source is beginning to uh, break up here. So once this uh, moves through, things should begin to dry out, places like Kodiak Island, where you saw all the rain in the last 24 hours. Next run out here to the west, starting to weaken as well. See the uh, low center is more or less staying put out to the west there. And this system having trouble making an eastward progression due to this strong building ridge of high pressure that all that moisture is flowing over the top of over the Northeast Pacific that's building. And actually another center developing up here over the Northwest interior. And that's really taking the uh, punch out of this uh, plume of moisture with it. Rolling that through again, you can see uh, southern southeast coast not too bad. Uh, and again, the clouds on the increase in the north, but the rain has yet to make it into that area. It's made the two about Yakutat this afternoon, but it looks like a big batch will shift in over the northern panhandle tonight and then rapidly dissipate during the day tomorrow. And again, up over the upper Yukon Valley, not a bad day. Big area of high pressure right uh, just northwest of the central Arctic coast. Uh, 1,035 millibars there. That's uh, kept temperatures near below freezing over on the eastern Arctic coast, but uh, pretty much precipitation free and even not much in the way of uh, fog as well up there with that. Uh, are some clouds across the north slope into the Brooks Range area as well as uh, into possibly the Seward Peninsula you can see it breaks up here, offshore flow, it had clear skies at Bethel this afternoon with that easterly flow drying it out and actually pushing the cloud bank uh, off the coast a ways. Next uh, system down here, kind of a wave developing and moving northward. And with that, that warm front, first big push of moisture here coming into southern Alaska. Uh, Mount's pretty significant with uh, that southwest Kodiak Island, Akiok, 24 hour rainfall amount, two and a half inches, about two and a quarter inches of rain with about one and three quarters of that falling during the day today or in the 12 hour period ending at 3 p.m. Kodiak State Airport, they picked up about uh, one and a half inches of precipitation with that and all the way up into uh, Southern Cook Inlet, Homer, eight tenths of an inch during the day today for a 12 hour amount there. Otherwise, by contrast, Anchorage is one one hundredth of an inch and rain streaming eastward here. That's the main push is off to the east and not so much to the north, but the entire pattern is shifting north and I'll be coming up and probably spread some more rain into uh, the northern parts of uh, Cook Inlet later on tonight and a big batch shifting into the panhandle. Out to the west, uh, not that impressive front. Uh, trying to push eastward, getting uh, blocked up here with the uh, system here coming northward, but uh, did bring two thirds of an inch of rain to uh, ADAC today. And wind's not all that strong. Big gradient here, still south of the Aleutians, has yet to get into even the Shimia area. So kind of right in the cull here, the Aleutian chain, right in the trough axis. But wind's uh, kicking up 35 miles an hour at St. Paul this afternoon. And also uh, areas of the uh, southwest coast starting to see gusts on the increase, uh, 30, 35 miles an hour. 
and uh, Gamble, St. Lawrence Island, seeing gusts uh, over 35 to possibly 40 miles an hour this afternoon. And for tonight, uh, that front out here just really weakens into a trough. This becomes the main frontal boundary right through here. And there are gale force winds, gusts 50 miles per hour, maybe even stronger through the uh, pass of the Alaska Peninsula. There are gale warnings out for Kodiak Island waters, Alaska Peninsula, Bristol Bay, southwest coast, up to St. Lawrence Island, possibly even the Bering Strait. Uh, could see uh, minimum gale force winds there. And pretty windy even over the southwest interior again. Again, this rain shifting northward, so northern Cook Inlet into the Susitna Valley, at least the southern Susitna Valley, maybe the Manuska Valley. We see a pretty good chance of at least some light rain at some point tonight. Big bulk of the moisture streaming eastward here. Yakutat could see moderate to heavy amounts of rain for a time later tonight, and the northern Panhandle looking pretty wet. Stays dry down to the south. Uh, high pressure here off the coast, and then this other high up to the north there, drifting eastward a little bit, 1,037 millibars. Dry, uh, some of this moisture, northerly flow aloft with the colder air. Could see a few skiffs of snow hitting the eastern Arctic coast tonight, mostly from oh, roughly Prudhoe Bay, maybe Dead Horse eastward to Kaktovik, but nothing significant, and that's about it. The bulk of that moisture of the snow is off into northern Canada. Stays clear, offshore flow, probably VFR all the way out to the coastline and beyond, maybe even all the way across the Bering Strait. Tonight, but this uh, area of rain pulling northward from the Kuskokwim Delta up into the Yukon Delta and through the Kuskokwim Valley, but staying south of the Alaska Range. And then for tomorrow, this, uh, that warm front really weakens uh, quite rapidly and does make a jog to the north a little bit into the northern Susitna Valley. So cloudy skies, areas of light rain or showers there, but the whole system is weakening. Look for uh, partial clearing, some sunshine tomorrow afternoon for Cook Inlet and into the Manuska Valley. Just some isolated showers lingering into the afternoon over the Kenai Peninsula. And this area of rain that moves into the southeast coast tonight, that's going to dissipate late tonight and early tomorrow. And by tomorrow afternoon, just a few lingering showers over towards uh, Elfin Cove and uh, scattered around Yakutat with mostly sunny skies, central and southern areas there. And also stays pretty nice up here over the interior. Have some clouds over the White Mountains, and that's about it. That uh, improving some, some VFR flying conditions tomorrow in about the same area there. But even the western Arctic coast, uh, pretty gusty winds and offshore flow. That'll push uh, sun or clear skies right out to the coastline. Uh, clouds, low, fog, low clouds and fog possible on the eastern Beaufort Sea coast. And winds, uh, stays pretty windy, St. Lawrence Island with rain. And then that cuts off right about the Seward Peninsula or the Bering Strait and the southern Seward Peninsula and Norton Sound see the best chance of rain out that way. Less wind, cloud, but uh, still cloudy and kind of showery with uh, IFR and marginal VFR out over the western Aleutians. Taking a look at uh, first day of the weekend for Saturday, really nice here over interior Alaska, upper high pressure controlling the weather. Uh, leftover moisture here keeps it uh, cloudy, occasionally damp there for Kodiak Island down along the south coast of the Alaska Peninsula. But uh, starting to clear out here on the Bristol Bay area, mostly sunny skies, variable clouds along the coast, still pretty breezy there, especially Nunavak Island and probably the Perbolov, still a tight gradient there, but you can see relaxing over the western interior, so less wind on Saturday than what you'll see tomorrow or tonight. A little pressure stays west of the Perbolovs, uh, one trough swings some uh, showers, fog and low clouds and drizzle into the central Aleutians. Another break, another one there coming across or approaching Shimia. But the uh, looks like this system will stay out to the west probably through the weekend as high pressure holds over the interiors. Looks like a couple of good days coming up, dry and mostly clear. Definitely for the southeast coast, uh, offshore flow with a high pressure over western Canada. Offshore winds, sunshine, temperatures not too bad, maybe even rising in the lower 60s. And Susitna Valley could even see temperatures rising in the lower to mid 60s on Saturday as well. Taking a look at the low temperatures tonight, forecast for the southeast coast, uh, 40s to near 50. Teens here for the eastern Brooks Range, 20s for the Arctic coast, 20s all the way down the eastern interior areas, 40s, southern Alaska, upper 40s, Bristol Bay and the Alaska Peninsula, St. Lawrence Island, mid 40s for the Aleutians. Highs for tomorrow afternoon, lower to mid 60s possible here for Bristol Bay as well as South Central Alaska with 50s and 50s for the most part in the central interior. Up to the north there, uh, the Brooks Range not looking too bad uh, near 40, but the Arctic coast there 
uh, in the uh, cold air coming down from the north, maybe reaching 30, 31 degrees. Some areas staying in the upper 20s, but milder off to the west. Out in the Aleutians, uh, lower 50s for the most part, uh, pretty uniform actually for the, low t or the high temperatures there tomorrow afternoon. 51, both at St. Paul, probably St. George as well as uh, Savunga and southwest or the uh, Yukon Delta, 55 to 60 for your highs and uh, lower to mid 50s for the western interior areas. And then for the lows t on Saturday morning, uh, teens, 17 at Eagle, otherwise in the 20s here from the Copper River Basin up to the eastern Arctic coast uh, with the exception of the Brooks Range, the Arctic Village, low also of 17 forecast with the southeast coast, a little cooler, some areas dropping into the 30s, a little more clearing, but uh, generally staying above freezing, some areas well above freezing, especially in the south, near 50 for the low Kodiak, and look at the lower 50s here for the Alaska Peninsula, otherwise uh, 40s over the southwest part of the coast, and uh, out to the west, the Aleutians mostly in the upper 40s for your low temperatures. High temperatures coming up on Saturday afternoon. Again, look at the Sitna Valley, 65 there forecast. I believe that's Talkeetna and 63 in and around the Anchorage area. Even the Kenai Peninsula, well into the 60s, near 60 for Kodiak. Bristol Bay, especially on the lee side of the Aleutian Range here, then Pilot Point, high 65, maybe in King Salmon as well. Lower 60s to the north, lower 60s for the Kuskokwim Delta, and mid to upper 50s there for the Alaska Peninsula. Lower 50s for the remainder of the Aleutians. Southeast coast uh, looking pretty good too. Uh, again, sunshine, complete or total sunshine, allowing temperatures to rise into the lower 60s in many areas. By contrast, uh, staying in the lower to mid 30s there for the eastern Arctic coast and in the 40s for the Burks Range. And now, aviation weather around Alaska. First flying weather graphic for Friday morning, IFR, uh, part of the north slope on out to the Arctic coast, marginal VFR to the Brooks Range, into the upper Yukon Valley, VFR, central interior, uh, Seward Peninsula and Norton Sound, and then a lot of IFR here, central eastern Bering Sea, down across the Aleutians, Alaska Peninsula, and uh, down sloping winds here, creating a little bit of VFR there on the lee side of the Alaska Peninsula. Otherwise, Kodiak IFR, Kenai Peninsula, and on up into the southeast interior to the southeast coast tomorrow afternoon. That uh, becomes VFR over much of the panhandle. Marginal VFR just off the coast. Uh, Yakutat, Gulf of Alaska, east side of Kodiak Island improving here across southern Alaska. That band of moisture is starting to dissipate and weaken. So breaking out the VFR in the afternoon, northern Cook Inlet, Mamnuska, the Sitna Valley, and Copper River Basin improving to marginal VFR, maybe better by late afternoon. VFR in the interior on the increase, IFR holding out here over the Bering Sea along the, and along the eastern Arctic coast. And for Saturday, area of IFR up there, central and western Arctic coast, a little bit over the north slope areas, otherwise marginal, that extend down into the Koyukuk Valley. VFR here, Cook Inlet, northwest across Kuskokwim Valley to uh, the northwest coast. And then uh, western southern Seward Peninsula, kind of on the marginal side into the Yukon Kuskokwim Delta with IFR and over the southwest mountains. IFR Kodiak Island from most, say, Seldovia, southern Kenai Peninsula, maybe Iliamna, more likely Augustine Island down along the Alaska Peninsula to the Fox Islands. Huge area IFR for the Bering Sea in the morning and for the afternoon. That pretty much uh, holds out there. And IFR, south side of the Alaska Peninsula, again, scooting up the east side of Kodiak Island, marginal VFR Shelkoff Strait up into Cook Inlet. A uh, little bit of marginal stuff coming in again, but uh, Prince William Sound VFR, good VFR through much of interior Alaska. And just a little bit of uh, lower conditions there of the marginal to possibly IFR variety just skipping the central Arctic coast. VFR east side here, all the way down the Copper River Basin. And all the panhandle looking really good with VFR flying. Passes Anatovic and Adigan tomorrow, both VFR. And for Lake Clark and Merrill, IFR to start improving trend throughout the day that'll last into the evening. Uh, for now, go uh, becoming marginal. Uh, could be better by late afternoon or tomorrow evening, but uh, right now, just an improving trend uh, for rainy as well. IFR becoming marginal. Windy though, VFR the entire day. And Isabel, uh, VFR, and then maybe becoming marginal, possibly some of that moisture shifting up to the northeast a little bit. Could catch the southern entrance uh, 
in the afternoon. And for Mentasta, same thing, possible marginal VFR south side, otherwise VFR. And Tanita, marginal VFR becoming VFR, definitely in the afternoon. Portage, IFR improving to marginal. And for Chilkoot and White, marginal VFR becoming VFR. And that will probably be pretty early on in the day. And for the freezing levels here, building upper level ridge southerly flow, so we can see 12,000 feet right up across uh, the southwest interior, the 8,000 feet all the way up there to about Cape Lismore and over the southeast Chuck CC. And then cold air coming down with those northerly winds aloft. You got 2,000 feet now all the way down almost into the uh, upper Tanana Valley, right around the White Mountains there, northeastward. And at the surface tomorrow morning, uh, a little bit to the south of that. Otherwise, a pretty good gradient here across southern Alaska in across the Panhandle. And icing, a lot of moisture again, has been coming up, uh, kind of breaking up through this area here, but still enough to possibly uh, produce moderate, considerable moderate rime icing here across Cook Inlet, especially early in the day, probably by later in the afternoon that'll be over. Some of that streaming into the northern Panhandle. Another patch out here over the southwest, maybe the Alaska Peninsula seen some considerable moderate, but uh, Areas of uh, isolated moderate possible, especially early in the day here in the east and throughout the entire day back in the west here in the uh, other shaded area. But it's pretty high up there, 9 to 11,000 feet and up. So upper level ridge here on the jet stream building northward there and it's uh, really clobbering that band of moisture. We thought it would be a little wetter than it is, but uh, by tomorrow we'll have a ridge right through this area. There's the colder air and those northerly 90 knot winds. Warm air south, 120 knots, pushing that warm air northward into the Bering Sea. 9,000 feet uh, southeast flow, 35 to 55 knots here along the southwest coast. Light over the eastern interior with uh, high pressure and 30 knots with that low out west. Same thing at uh, 3,000 feet. A little lighter on the winds, but strong 30 to 45 here across the southwest. Moderate turbulence go along with that all the way up to Kotzebue Sound. The Galactic Tea Party. Welcome to Stargazers. I'm James Albury, director of the Kika Silva Pla Planetarium in Gainesville, Florida. And I'm Dean Regis, astronomer from the Cincinnati Observatory. Autumn is finally here, and one of my favorite asterisms will soon be disappearing from the early evening sky. That's right, James. The teapot will be visible in the southern sky, and it has a great galactic secret to share. What are we talking about? Let's show you. Okay. We have our skies set for an hour after sunset any night next week, facing south. Near the horizon, you'll see the stars of Sagittarius the Centaur Archer. He's just to the east of the J-shaped constellation of Scorpius the Scorpion. Many of the stars of Sagittarius are too faint to see from cities. However, there are eight stars here that are fairly bright, and they form what we call an asterism, like the Big Dipper in Ursa Major and the Sickle in Leo the Lion. Therefore, the teapot in Sagittarius is not an official constellation. Nevertheless, it's a fun pattern to spot, and with a little imagination, you can enjoy watching it cruise across the sky to pour tea on the tail of Scorpius the Scorpion. The stars Caus Media, Alnazel, and Caus Australis make the spout. Caus Media, Caus Borealis, and Phi Sagittarii make the lid. Caus Media, Phi Sagittarii, Ascella, and Caus Australis make the body of the teapot. And Phi Sagittarii, Acella, Tau Sagittarii, and Nunki make the handle. Phew, that's a lot of funny star names. Now finally, if you have super dark skies and a good imagination, the Milky Way looks like steam coming out of the spout of the teapot. No way. Yes way. As legend has it, Scorpius the Scorpion wanted to show off his brand new teapot by having a tea party. Wait, this is a legend? Uh, well, okay, it's kind of a story I made up. Yeah, but scorpions don't drink tea. Just, just play along, it'll be fun. All right, all right, if you say so. So, anyway, Scorpius invited Orion the Hunter and his two hunting dogs, Canis Major and Canis Minor, to his tea party. Unfortunately for Scorpius, he forgot that those constellations are in the winter part of the sky. So, by the time they arrived, the sky had rotated so far that all the tea poured out of the teapot, leaving only the steam behind. So, what do you think? 
The scorpion having a tea party in the sky. Well, it's no ancient Greek myth, but uh, maybe it's so bad it's good. Well, now let's take a closer look at this part of the Milky Way. On clear moonless nights, far from city lights, you'll see that the tip of the teapot is embedded in the widest and densest part of the great ribbon of light we call the Milky Way. At this time of year, this great band of stars stretches all the way from the southwestern horizon up to the zenith and back down to the northeast horizon. In fact, if you look more closely at Sagittarius and Scorpius, you will see that most of the teapot and the bottom half of the Scorpion are embedded in the Milky Way. And if you take a pair of binoculars and look here, or for that matter, anywhere along the Milky Way, you'll see that it's made up of millions of pinpoints of light. Each one is a distant star. These stars, along with our sun, all belong to a great cosmic spiral family of 200 billion stars we call a galaxy, the Milky Way galaxy. The Milky Way is so huge, it is more than 100,000 light years across, and the Earth is about two-thirds of the way out from the center on one of the spiral arms. When we look at Sagittarius and Scorpius, the reason the Milky Way appears the thickest and widest here is because the bulging center of our galaxy lies in this direction. And at the center of the galaxy lies a deep, dark, mysterious object of incredible density. It's a supermassive black hole. You can't see it, but it lurks among the stars of Sagittarius. So, there you have it. A galactic tea party with a celestial teapot. Look for Sagittarius tonight and gaze into the center of the galaxy. Keep, Keep looking, looking up. And now, marine weather around Alaska. Welcome back. Looking at today's sea ice analysis, not much different from yesterday. This area pretty much uh, the same as it has been for the last week or so. And new ice continuing to form along this stretch of the ice pack and then what's up off the chart there uh, slowly. And that's uh, expected to continue for the next uh, few days. Coastal water forecast, 15 to 20 knot northwest winds on the south coast of the Panhandle. Clarence Strait, north of 20, seas 4 feet, north 10 with 3 foot seas there for Stevens Passage. Small craft advisories, Lincoln Isle, north winds 25 knots, seas 5 feet. And uh, lighter 10 knot winds here on the north coast. Saturday outlook, uh, 20 to 25 knots, central coast out of the northeast. Uh, good offshore flow there, keeping it dry and clear. Sea 7 to 8 feet. 20 knot winds on the south coast, 15 on the north coast. Gales for Lynn Canal, north 35 knots, turn northeast 25, gusts 40 knots for Stevens Passage, so quite windy over the central and northern inside waters on Saturday, north of 20 for Clarence Strait. Prince William Sound, north winds 15 tomorrow, south 15 there for the north Gulf Coast on the eastern portion, west side here, northeast to 20, southeast 20 for the Barren Islands, seas there 9 to 10 feet. And small craft advisories here, uh, Southern Cook Inlet into Kamishak Bay, northeast 25 knots, seas up to 7 feet. Those come down to 15 from the east-northeast on Saturday. East winds 15 here with 9-foot seas for the Barren Islands. Light northeast breeze there for Northern Cook Inlet. Easterlies at 10 for Prince William Sound. East to northeast for the North Gulf Coast, just 10 knots, but those 8-foot seas keep these small craft advisories in place. And for Kodiak Island, on the east side, southeast 20, northeast 30 for Shelikoff Strait, east 30 here for Bristol Bay, and southeast 30 after the gales tonight. These coming down to 30 knots uh, tomorrow, tomorrow afternoon, with sea 16 feet in the Pacific side of the peninsula. <clears throat> and then for Saturday, uh, bring the gales back up here on the north side of the peninsula, southeast 35, seas 9 feet, 30 knots from Cape Surachef all the way up to Sitkanak, and including uh, Shelikoff Strait, 30 knot winds out of the northeast there, otherwise east 20 uh, along the east side of Kodiak. And for the uh, western Aleutians, west northwest, 25 to 30 knots, 13 to 16 foot seas, Adak and Atka, westerlies, 10 to, or 20 to 25, seas up to 12 feet. And the Fox Islands, the uh, strongest winds uh, 
south of Unalaska Island, small craft advisories there for south at 25 knots, otherwise lighter and more variable. And then for Saturday, 15 knot winds out of the uh, south, southwest to maybe even west there for the eastern Aleutians. Light winds also for the central areas, Adak and Atka, west, southwest to 15. And these uh, western zones coming down 15 to 20 knots out of the west. Gales along the coast tomorrow here for the areas both north and south of Nunavak Island, 35 knots, 12 foot seas, east 30 knots, north and sound, St. Lawrence Island as well as St. Matthew Island, only 15 knots for the Frivolofs. South 15 for the St. Paul, St. George area. Still have the gales here again, two days in a row coming up for gale force winds on the southwest coast. Seas 13 feet, gales for St. Matthew Island. Small craft advisories continue, St. Lawrence Island and Norton Sound. Eastern Boulevard Sea Coast, 10 to 15 knots out of the north northwest. East 15, Central Coast, pick up dramatically here on down the coastline, 30 knots on the west side, all the way down to the Bering Strait, all out of the east. And those uh, hold east southeast, or actually southeast from Wales up to Cape Beaufort. East 30 on the western coast, 25 knot winds now, small craft advisories in the forecast Saturday for the central coast, otherwise east 20s all the way to demarcation point. And for tonight again, this warm front uh, southeast flow definitely pulling moisture, wind increasing, rain increasing here over the southwest uh, or Yukon Cuscombe Delta areas. Winds increasing here for the Bering Strait, Seward Peninsula areas as well, uh, and to a lesser extent up around Kotzebue as the gradient tightens but it's going to remain dry. That dry swath will be through the central interior over toward the border, but just a few clouds in the north. Flurries eastern Arctic coast possible. A uh, good batch of rain shifts into the northern panhandle during the night tonight, wet across uh, the north Gulf Coast, Kenai Peninsula, Cook Inlet. And then for tomorrow, that area of rain dissipates, mostly sunny central and southern panhandle, drying out even over south central Alaska. This band lifting northward and really starting to dissipate in the day. Stays wet and windy here in the west, but not quite as wet and actually not quite as windy, except for the Alaska Peninsula. Sunshine up over the northern interior, low clouds and fog, eastern Arctic coast. That pattern more or less holds into Saturday. Sunshine over much of the interior. So sit in the valley, 60s for the highs. Panhandle summer is reaching 60s with uh, quite windy conditions. And this area shifts back to the west on Saturday, so even the southwest coast looking good. These forecasts are for planning purposes only. Call 1-800-WX-BRIEF for a formal pre-flight briefing. Always file a flight plan before you go flying. The U.S. Coast Guard Auxiliary urges you to leave a float plan with a friend or the harbor master before you go boating.